So let's talk about your Etsy traffic. You're probably watching this video because you're drying up on traffic and you're not getting sales. And there's a good reason for that. In this video, I want to talk about the formula that you need to follow in order to get traffic. And if you don't follow these exact steps that I'm going to share with you guys in this video, you're going to be a dry Etsy shop that will have no sale. So make sure to watch to the end because I'm going to share with you guys some of the top tips that I use for my business. And I'm a top seller on Etsy. And I also consult and manufacture for some of the top performing Etsy shops. So if you want to know the secrets of how to increase your traffic, make sure to watch this video to the end. All right, so there are really three different ways to get traffic. You can either target the big niche, the niches that have hundreds of thousands of views and visits per month, or you can go the mid-range niche. And the mid niche, uh, they're usually within a few 10,000, 1,000 per month. And then there's the micro niche. Now, in each of these traffic types, I'm going to show you how to really infiltrate and how to utilize that traffic. And personally, I don't think you should go for after just one of them. I think you should have three different types of traffic that comes to your store, to your listings. That's actually how I've been doing my business. I've been sprinkling all these different traffic types throughout my Etsy shops. Some of them are more profitable, some of them not as profitable, but, but they're really good for consistency. So I'm going to go through each one of them and then show you how exactly I get traffic from these different types of sections. So we're going to start off with the micro niche and we're going to work our way down to getting to the big niche and the big traffic source. All right, so we'll start off with number three. This is a micro niche. And I find this strategy more common with print on demand where there is just uh, an ease of putting up a listing. And the reason why people do this is because it focuses more on SEO and less on Etsy recommending your product. And out of these three, that's really the, 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 the difference in how you're going to achieve that traffic. If Etsy starts recommending your product, that's really where you're going to get the most of the traffic. And we all know this, right? We're old enough. We could talk about this now. It's not awkward, but you don't get traffic from SEO. However, when it comes, comes to micro niches, those are usually uh, an SEO traffic. It's not that much, but the strategy with this one is you have to create a lot of listings. You have to have a scalable format where you can bring listings onto the market, good quality listings, but a lot of them nonetheless. For example, if you're going to be selling a superhero t-shirts for bridesmaids, there's not that many bridesmaids that want to make a superhero theme, but there are some. Now, I don't know if this is a keyword, you might have to do your own research, but when you are keyword researching, if you find a niche that has very specific on what they're looking for and they're not gonna cross over to other niches, they're just gonna buy this one t-shirt or this one product, then if you create a product for it, you have a pretty high chance that they're gonna buy your product at least X amount of times for month, per month. It's not gonna be maybe every day, might not be a week, but it might be at once, you know, once or twice a month. And if you have hundreds or thousands of those kind of listings, you are going to get traffic or traction. And print on demand, like I mentioned, is one of those types of business models that utilizes this specific strategy. There's nothing wrong with that. I get, I have a lot of my dog collars that I sell on Etsy, sometimes targeting these specific niches and they do generate sales. And I do recommend having some strategy. You just have to increase the volume of listings to, to get this kind of traffic. When you're looking at statistics, don't get upset or, or, or don't be discouraged when there's not much people buying from that listing. Just leave it alone. You might not need to advertise it, but just leave it alone. And in fact, when you have a hyper specific niche product, I usually don't advertise that because you're telling the algorithm, hey, try to take a super niche item and advertise it to the mass public. That's not going to work because mass public is not into this niche, right? Not every bride, bridesmaids usually don't like superhero t-shirts. They want something a little bit more elegant. And so it wouldn't be appropriate to advertise a product like that. Maybe I'll advertise it for the first few weeks, but I will just leave it be. All right, number two, and that is mid niche. And the reason why I really like this one is because it's not competing with crossover products, meaning other niche products. So if you're selling a mug, for example, you're competing with everything that has the keyword gift in it. Because most of the time mugs are bought because of gifts. With mid uh, um, niches, they're more tied to a specific function or a specific purpose. And this is what keeps traffic localized to that product, which means your conversion rate is going to be much higher than even one or three. For example, when you're selling luggage tags, you're not going to compete with, you know, well, you're not going to compete with mugs. You're not going to compete with candles. You're just, people want a luggage tag for a specific reason and purpose, which means when they come onto Etsy and they have that purpose, they're going to buy it because that's what they need to buy. And so conversion rates are much better and advertising is really appropriate for this product. 
And also, what this happens is now it's introducing the element that Etsy can actually recommend this product to other people. For example, people that are getting ready for a trip, bridesmaids that are getting ready for a, you know, a, a, a bachelorette party, or maybe somewhere else, or maybe a couple get preparing their honeymoon. This product can be recommended. So now you're getting traffic from Etsy app and other pages in your statistics portion of your dashboards. So now you're able to access more traffic, not only from the SEO, and it has a purpose and uh, um, task specific product. And I always say these are the best products and bulk of all my uh, uh, listings have this specific uh, pro type of product because it creates a more stable business. You're actually solving a problem. So the three things that it does, it's good conversion rate, it is uh, task, sp task specific, and it has the element of introducing this kind of the introduction of Etsy and Etsy recommending your product to someone that might not even be looking for luggage tag. And this is where you get bulk of the sales. Okay. This is where you get bulk of the traffic. And so now we're going to move on to the last one. And that is targeting the big traffic, the people that are not tied to any niche. It is the majority traffic. Now, how does this work? It starts off with a niche. It starts off in fact, very, very niche and trends begin like this, by the way. It starts off very niche, but it is appropriate for the majority of the public. That's how things go viral. Take a look at Mr. Beast, for example. He makes crushing a Lamborghini video, and every kid would be like, that's gonna be fun to watch. But then I'm like looking over the shoulder, I'm like, well, what happens to the Lamborghini? So when you have the similar idea on Etsy, you can potentially create that same effect. Now that happened, and I've said this before, they did this on uh, um, Mod Podge on the inside of a shell and it made that into an ornament of your city or whatever uh, detail that you wanted on the inside and it sold like wildfire. Now it started with a super hyper niche. Anybody that wanted to create a decorative uh, Christmas tree that has an ocean style uh, look to it but it was appropriate to the majority public. Therefore, products like that just took off. All right, so there are four characteristics to this product that you wanna watch out for. Um, and first one, it is a niche crossover product. It can cross over to other niches and do really well on, in regards to competition with other products. Now, I've done this to my with my students. I showed them exact product that I did and it did really well. And the reason why I did really well is because I was able to find a product that actually did niche crossover, even though fundamentally it was to one particular niche, but it crossed over really nicely to other products. So if you wanna find out what product that is, check out the link in the description below. I do show you exactly what happens with products like this. The next one is it's giftable. And this is part of the niche crossover is if it's giftable, then many different types of people can get this product and it'll be appropriate. And so this is where you're getting a lot more Etsy recommendation, Etsy app and other pages on your statistics portion of your dashboard. Okay, the next one is price per value. And this is very important. When you have price per value, meaning it's a good, very competitive price and the thing that you're offering your to your sellers is way better than that plastic, cheap vinyl covered, you know, whatever, this one is, hey, this is embroidered leather, whatever, you can't embroider on leather, but it has all these elements or maybe textures or uniqueness to the product at the same price, then you all of a sudden, if it's a giftable product, it is a no brainer. So price per value is going to be an important one. And this is, by the way, this is why having a good system in your shop, having a process of producing your product at an efficient rate is going to be critical. This is what the top sellers are doing. They're accessing these large traffics. Why? Because they have a system to do that. And the last one is broader audience appeal. And like I said, you start off with the niche and it's really grounded in a particular niche. It'll give it more that affinity to a niche and that niche will then push it and it'll be recommended to more and more people. So let's talk about kind of the journey of a customer and how the algorithm really recommends. Cause right, we're talking about small niche where, or, or very micro niche and you're utilizing just the SEO. Then you're talking about mid niche where it's both SEO and starting to get some recommendation. And uh, uh, kind of the larger is you're doing some niche and most of it is Etsy recommending to crossover niche uh, type of traffic. Let's, let me show you how that works on an algorithm based or let's just talk about how it works on an algorithm based. When a, a bride is coming on to Etsy, and let's just say you are selling a superhero t-shirt, the majority of the brides are gonna say, that's not what I'm looking for. And they're gonna say that in regards to not clicking on your listing. They're not gonna click, they're not gonna look through your listing, they're not gonna favor it, they're just gonna skim past it. And that will uh, show the algorithm that this product is not appropriate for the mass market or majority of the people, so it's not gonna recommend to more 
uh, customers because obviously they're going to get less chance of sales. And Etsy is all about making profit. It's all about making money. And so if it can sell something or put something in front of the customer that has a higher chance to buy it, then they're going to uh, they're going to make money. So at the end of the day, that's what Etsy cares about. So when we're talking about Etsy app and Apple Pages, that's really the fundamental heaviness of the Etsy and how it works. However, if you came onto the platform, also the way you can, uh, the brides can say, that's not what I'm looking for, is if the, the, the design is boring. It's not, not that it's not appropriate, but it's boring. Let's just say you're selling t-shirts that have uh, the word, the name bridesmaid on it, and the maid of honor, matron of honor, it's very boring. And so they go past it and the same thing happens. Even though it's trying to appeal to a broader audience, but it's just boring, okay? However, then there, there comes a bride and say, and, and it looks at a product and it's a 70s niche, right? It's a very niche, it's 70s style bridesmaid t-shirt that says bride on it in a very 70s font. Now that was a trend for a little bit. And then the bride says, ooh, that looks cool, what about that? And so now it's going to be recommending to more brides and if more brides say, ooh, what about that? Then you're gonna have a product that's gonna be going to semi-viral, it's gonna to start to work its way. And the algorithm is gonna to recommend to more brides because it seems to have a better conversion rate. Now it started off with a niche, like a 70s niche, but it worked its way to the broader audience. And that's kind of where you get trends happening. The other thing is what, what's going on is now this, this um, 70s t-shirt is making that much more sales in the apps and other pages than it does on SEO. And I find that a lot of um, POD sellers, when I look at their dashboard, you will see that the Etsy app and other pages is very small compared to their SEO. And that's because Etsy's not recommended. But if you see products that have a high recommendation, then you will have a much smaller SEO. Well, it's smaller because in comparison to recommendation, it is small. And so that's how you have products that have more and more traffic. So what do we do? What do we do? So first, we obviously research. We determine where, what kind of product this is. Is it going to be a micro niche or is it going to be a mid niche? And is it going to be a larger kind of targeting abroad? And there's different approaches you need to take. So for micro niche, you've made the decision now, I'm going to only target these people. I know it's not going to get a ton of sales or a ton of visits, but I'm just going to do this. And I'm going to do all of these niches, have a big list of these micro niches and target each one of them, understanding what you're doing. Now, if you find a product that has a specific uh, uh, function to it or attached to a specific purpose, make sure that you're clear on the value proposition. So if you are doing a luggage tag, say, hey, this is a leather engraved or hey, this is a, a metal one that you're not going to get scratched, right? Scratch resistant or whatever, right? Because luggage are tossed around or within that create different variations of that. So it could be appropriate for a girl who wants pink unicorn or for a boy's racing cars or dinosaurs. And it could be, or maybe you're targeting a couple that's just got married, maybe a little bit more elegance to it. So now you're taking uh, the approach of what is it used for? And let me design according to that. So understand the, the purpose to it and really create that value. But then keep in mind that it might be crossing over a little bit. So make sure that you have some elements of it where they can choose different uh, varia variations within the listing. So have them shop your listing, not your store. That will give it a higher chance to, to be ranked on the majority kind of a cross niche over so that's something important to do by the way when you are shopping the listing not your store that is going to give you a higher chance of doing a crossover niche where you're going to be recommended to other niches however now if you're going to target the big traffic these are kind of like the viral products they do and if you've watched those training on how to do drop shipping items and things like that they'll usually tell you find the viral product on TikTok or or instagram and then sell that because it has that viral effect well, with Etsy, there's very similar elements to it. If you find a product that has kind of this appeal, the viral appeal, then you're going to do really well. And, and, and if you have a product that has a viral appeal, um, um, really, again, make sure that you shop, shop your listing, not your store. Make sure that the, the, the value is the price and the production is, is so good that you can be a cost efficient. And maybe you can build your business towards that. So you, you can do that with more and more product. All of that traffic, however, is not going to go anywhere if people are not clicking on your listing. So if you, you can have all this figured out, but if your listing is not clickable within the first two, three seconds, it's not going to work. And that's why thumbnail is super, super important. So check out this video in order to get the best, best listing that you can possibly get because you are building your business. So check it out and subscribe to this video. We're going to get more videos like this where I share with you guys my secrets on how I run my Etsy shop. Until next time, you guys have an awesome day.